But first, to allocate this hub series in our catalog, we're talking about the uh, range of Eckler matrices. All right, and among the Eckler matrices, you know that we have the MIMO series on top, starting by MIMO 4040 down to MIMO 88SG. And then below the MIMO series, we have the DAM614, okay? Hub series would be located exactly between DAM614 and MIMO88. Don't look at the number of channels. In Hub 1616 and Hub 1408, it's the first time where you have a huge number of channels with, uh, but in the, in, the, in the price range of the small number of channels, okay? So exactly this is where we locate the Hub series. Meanwhile, MIMO 4040DN and sorry, meanwhile, MIMO series and are operated or are managed through Eclairnet Manager, our software that you already know. And DAM614 is managed through Eclair.com, another proprietary software from Eclair. Hubs, hub series are managed with Hangar, Hangar web application. Okay, this is an embedded web app already uh, embedded in the in the hardware okay so we don't need to download or or install any additional software in, in our pc or laptop for to, to get a more even more clear picture as a reminder as well meanwhile mimo series are operated through ip our ip based uh, devices and DAM614 is managed through serial port, RS232. Mm -hmm. Hub series are operated also through the Ethernet port, okay? Connecting directly to the uh, specific IP of the device and the, the Hangar web application will be launched already from the device. Let's see a little bit more about this. We did it in such an easy way that in only two steps, in only two steps, you can actually uh, use a hub. All right, step one, sorry, maybe three steps, three steps, not two. <laughs> step one, connecting the inputs, connecting audio sources. Step two, connecting outputs to the zones. Makes sense. Step three, connecting the device to the network. Once we do this, we are ready to operate the system from our smartphone. No need to create from zero the panels or so, no, no, no. There are already the, the loaded preset from factory allows you, the user to in only three steps, already use the device and control it by phone. Control means, as you can see in this, in this uh, iPhone here, control volume, control source selection, and control equalization in every zone, all right? As you see, the control is done with the application pilot. About the hub series, we are presenting today two models. We already presented in ISC, but we are launching, officially launching today two models. Hub 1616, which is a 16 input and 16 output um, audio zoner. We call it audio zoner and not matrix because there is a slight difference between a matrix and an audio zoner. And the main difference is that a matrix is able to mix several inputs into one output. Meanwhile, an audio zoner will only, the, the function that we will use only, it's the most commonly used function in matrices actually, or features in matrices, is uh, routing one input signal to one particular output. Okay, this is what we do. This is the basic function of a matrix and this is exactly what hub series do. First model is 16 by 16. I don't know if I have to check the chat or not. All right. 
One model is 16 by 16, and the second model is 14 inputs by eight outputs. 1408. Easy to remember. 1616, 1408. What we have in every device is some sound processing and some configuration. Both DSP and configuration, we do it with Hangar, the web application embedded in the device. With the Hangar, we operate sound processing like noise gates, compressors, limiters, delays, crossovers. We have an eight band graphic equalization. We have the frequency shifter, a feature available until now only in MIMO series uh, that, that is extremely helpful to avoid feedback um, of, of, of in meeting rooms or in any environment. Frequency shifter is already available in the hub series. And then we can couple channels from stereo to mono or, or, or invert the phase. And also from Hangar, we do manage the pilot users. The manage the pilot users mean that we will be able to create from here, from Hangar, um, different users with different permissions. So I will see, I will operate zone one, five, and seven, and you will operate zone two, three, four. Okay, so that's what we will do with the Hangar. And then for the control, we use the pilot application. Or we can also use the EM Control 1, this wall panel that was already launched, uh, if I'm not wrong, a couple of years ago. But to do it from a smartphone or a tablet or uh, even a laptop, we can use pilot application and from there control volume, source selection, and tone control. We have a three band tone control in the application. Okay. So let's now talk a little bit about the hardware itself. We have here a zoomed picture of the Hub 1616. For all those who know Imimo 1616, you see that this is exactly a renaming of the product. And, and I take this chance to explain or to, to clarify if needed that Imimo 1616 was for many, many of our clients and, and many people a misleading name because they were expecting to control Imimo 1616 through Eclarnet Manager. And this was never an Eclarnet Manager device, Imimo 1616. So that's, what, that's why we renamed it to avoid any confusion, all right? That's, that's how we learn by, by, by listening to, to our clients and, and, and guessing hey, something's wrong here. So we changed the name and we took the chance of the re renaming or the, we took the advantage, the advantage of a renaming situation to launch this Hub 1408, the second model, which was already in the pipeline. And, and we made it uh, together with the, with the renaming. So let's recheck then the hardware of Hub 1616. We have one, two, three, four, five, all, all, the, all the numbers that are in the, in the manual. I'll be fast with this, okay? Number one and two are monitor volume and monitor input to check yourself what is playing in every channel. In number three, we have all the voometers for every output. In number four, we have the selection or muting button for every output as well. And this is the front panel still. Five to nine is the control panel. In five, we have this control button, six rotary uh, panel, rotary, sorry, uh, control. Seven and eight are LEDs for data status reception and eight for on off. And then nine, uh, an LCD screen. And this is, this is something important now. By pressing five and six, at the same time, so the, the rotary can also be pressed. By pressing five and six at the same times for three seconds, the number nine, the screen, will show us the IP address of the device. 
Okay, so this is where we can start managing the device uh, when we connect directly to the IP of the device. Hmm? Then in the back side, we have 10 to 12 the, the power mains. 13 is a mute port. 14 are the remote inputs, remote inputs. 15, we can give phantom on or off for the, uh, for the microphone inputs. 16 is the paging, is a paging input, the same as pager A here in input seven. 17 and 18 are a mic microphone input with a gain. 20, 20, 21, 22 are exactly, sorry, let's go here, 19 and 20 first. 19 and 20 are Ethernet port and RS-232 port. Also, we are also available to, to control via RS-232 or to uh, be controlled by third parties, okay? Then input six, uh, sorry, 20, 20, 21, 22, we have a microphone line input plus gain. Same for 23, 24. This is a line input plus gain and the same here in the, in the 25, 26, 27, okay? Line input, RCA or Euroblock and the gain. And then number 28 are all outputs from this, from this digital zoner. Let's see now the hub 1408. It's exactly the same hardware as if we cover these areas that, that I just covered in green. Okay, so half of the outputs mean that in the backside we have a blind space here in from outputs 9 to 16, and also these are not shown in the front panel. In the number of inputs, we jump from 16 to 14, so the two inputs that we that we dismiss are inputs three and four okay so all the rest remains the same now we will we will pay special attention to the local inputs and to the remote inputs first local inputs for hub 16 and for hub 1408 basically what we have is the first range of inputs four in the in the 1616-2, in the 1408, we have RCA uh, line levels. These are all line inputs. Uh, we have in the 1616 two more RCA's inputs. But for the rest, from five to eight, from three to six in the 1408, are exactly the same. We have microphone or line. And the last two inputs are directly paging inputs okay so we can connect directly the paging stations moreover these four last inputs have priorities means that we can establish different priorities between them okay so we have input seven and eight that we can use for paging station for for paging systems but input from five to eight from three to six in 1408 we can use them for ducking, ducking uh, in the way of setting different, four different levels of priorities between all these four channels, okay? We have four priority modules here in, in the hub series. Let's see now the paging inputs, particularly in these uh, local inputs, the paging ones, uh, we have the paging port where we connect directly uh, an EM page, already known device, or we can, if this is, if we want paging, if we want to use them as a docker, we can use directly the microphone line input and then set the game. Okay, and set the priority into the, in the hangar. In this EM page, as a reminder, okay, this product was also launched two years ago. As a reminder, we have a 16 button zone selection. We can select all, we can clear, we can page, and then we have two buttons with our, which are F1 and F2, which are programmable. So we can group a number of zones. And then you see here in the middle, the zone one, zone two, up to zone 16, this is electronic ink. 
So the name that we type in the configuration of the hangar is the name that will be shown here in this, in this panel, in this uh, labeling panel of electronic ink. All right, <clears throat> let's continue now with the remote inputs. The remote inputs are eight interfaces of our J45 connection. Okay, in this RJ45 connection, we connect, we can connect a remote panel, right? Remote panel like the EM control one. So from, from this panel, we control uh, source selection, volume, and zones, okay? And across the same cable, travels the control itself, the data itself from the panel, and we use the cable also to power the panel, so we don't need an additional power supply in where the panel is. Additionally, if we want to send also an audio signal, we can add a WPA mix T wall panel beside the EM control one, connect WPA mix T to EM control one, and the same connection goes to the same remote input. So now through the cable are traveling the control, the power to fit both of the panels and also a balanced audio signal coming from the WPA mix T. As a reminder, the WPA mix T is a two by one mixer with a priority. So you can use this as a, as a, even as an extension of the number of channels of the hub 1616 okay all right let's see an example of of connection here how to make the most of it of a hub 1616 connect a couple of players to input one and two. We connect a microphone using, we can, we can use the phantom switch to turn it on, to use a microphone or a remote microphone input to input, for example, five and six. A couple of paging stations to input seven and eight. Then we can use both EM control plus WPA mix T for remote inputs one and two, and we will control and send audio. We can use the mute port connected to some uh, alarm system or any system where we need to mute our outputs from this matrix. Then all outputs, we can use only two amplifiers, eGPA eight by 150, with only two of them, we can cover the 16 zones. And then we connect the device to the network so we can manage through our um, pilot panels in our smartphone. Then we can configure the system, the whole, the whole uh, device from hangar, from a laptop connected also to the network. To do, uh, to, to have an idea, if we talk um, about this whole picture here, end user price is around the, all the Eclair devices here in this picture, end user prices are around 5,000 euro, end user prices, okay? Just to give a clear picture, a picture of, of, of what are we talking about here? We're talking about a device, hub series, we're talking about devices which are, uh, fully featured in a price range that, that is surprising for, for most of us. So this is, with this low budget, you can have already a pretty nice installation, okay? As you see, I didn't paint the speakers here in this, in this slide. But however, still, it's a, it should be a very competitive project. So let's go now to see the software. The first, we have two different softwares here. We have the hangar and we have the pilot. We will see both. 
Hangar is the embedded web server application already embedded in the in the hub. This is how it looks like. And we'll focus now in the menu here in the left side. Now is is it the, what is shown here is as is as we as we click the configuration option. Okay, you will see we, we will go through this a little bit later through the application, but first let's explain every of these of these options in, in our menu. So we have configuration, the general settings. We have here the advantage of the ability to save or load setups. Setups that we have already done before and we can save them into our laptop and then we can load this setup into the next, uh, into the next hub. Just to show you here in the previous slide, we have four predefined setups from factory. This, com this is coming from factory and the first one is the one pre-loaded in every, in every device. So if you want to use this device as a 16 mono zones, so 16 mono zones, 16 mono outputs and two sources, only by loading this setup, it's already done and we can already control the, the, the 16 zones from our, from our phone. The same for the rest of the setups. If we want to create another different set, setup, we can just create it, save it, and then load it to the next, to the next um, hub. So first is general settings. The second option is users. Here is where we manage the pilot user's permissions. We create different users with different permissions. We can create up to 20 different users. Hmm. The next option allows us to do something with the front panel, just lock it so, uh, the, so our client won't be able to mess with it. Or we can, we can set different options for the, for the buttons. In this option is where we configure the inputs, we rename them, we apply any sound processing. The same we do with the outputs. We have a uh, new feature here, which is a master volume. In the, in the previous EMIMO 1616, we didn't have this master volume option. And master volume allows the user to well, to have a master volume to uh, control the general volume of all the zones together, of course, respecting the percentage of the different volumes that they were set. So, but they will just turn up and down simultaneously following, following this control. In the next option, we can manage the different priority levels of the pagers and dockers. We, manage, we will manage also the remote panels, the remote uh, EM control settings. And for this last option, well, the, the before last, we control or we will create here the different panels. We will configure these panels. We will, there is some little option of uh, customization by colors, nothing special, very different than, than what we do in Eclair Net Manager. But still, there are some options, and we are controlling them here. We will be able to create up to 32 panels, okay? If we have 16 zones, having 32 panels should be more than enough. And then last option is for help. User manuals, pictures, uh, any, any help is available in the application. About the pilot, the other software, this is the control application, okay, available in Google Play and in Apple Store. And here now, yes, we, we are setting only two steps to control the system. First step is discover where is my hub, where do I have to connect. If I am connected into the same network than the hub, then the application will show it. And the second step that we have to take is to choose between managing public panels or private panels. 
okay, who want to manage private panels because I have my own user with my own panels that no one else can touch. And I will go to user access and set and, and, and type my, my credentials. Meanwhile, if I want to access to the panels that anyone can see, then public pilot panels will not ask any credentials and will show all the panels that are public. This is set logically by the administration, by the administrator in Hangar. And we will see panels like this, volume control, if we click here in volume, then if we click here in sources, we will see the source selection panel. And if we click in equalizer, we have a three band tone control. And, and if you are an obsessed bassist, then you can raise up the bass as much as you need to hear the bass clearly. All right. We are, the, the presentation will not take much longer than this. Let's now give, give you some tips on how you can work because what we, what we see is clearly two options here. First option, work with uh, predefined setups. For example, the factory setup for CAP 16, 16 is this scheme, two sources and 16 zones mono. Only by loading this setup, mm, the configuration is already done like this. Or we can, you can load another uh, setup that we propose, which is having six sources, six different sources, and then eight zones stereo. So we are using two channel per zone. Then a couple of, I'm showing a couple of uh, setups for 1408 as well. We have four pre-charge setups in every model. In 1408, the factory setup is two sources and eight zones mono, or three sources and four zones stereo. This is the first way of working, loading setups and being ready to, and being ready to, to operate the whole, the, the system uh, through the pilot. Another option is creating panels, private panels, uh, creating private panels for every user and for every zone. So now let's see an example. Imagine that we receive, well, this email. <clears throat> I'm going to read it. Dear friends, we need you to provide us an audio system for our office. Basically, what we basically we want to be able to choose if we play music from the local play, player that we already have or from the PC in the reception desk. We want to control everything through our phones. We don't want tablets and dedicated touch screens all around the office. We have three three separate zones: the open space office, the meeting room with local connection and the director's office. She wants her own music, All right? If an emergency happens, an evacuation message player will launch messages that have to be heard in all areas, overwriting whatever that is playing. Although our budget is pretty low, we would like you to be aware that we are extremely busy and we don't want to worry for this system. So please, include in your proposal something that is actually reliable. Please be sure we won't need to call you every two weeks for system maintenance. Thanks for understanding. Best regards, your beloved client signs. And then he says, PS, we know that the favorite color of our director is Foxia. So do you think that we can give her a nicer price? All right, this is the email that we have. <clears throat> Perfect. So to structure the information that is in the text, in the first paragraph, basically, he said that we have five different sources, right? They have a player already with them. Then they have a PC. They have a, an evacuation player that has to overwrite everything. And then they have a local input in the meeting room 
remote or for remote, a local input in the meeting room and then another input in the director's office. They said that she wants her own music to play in, in, in the office. So, so here is the first thing that we have to choose, the first election that we have to do, and is to which input do we connect every uh, source? So background music and player to sources one and two. Then the evacuation player, since we want priority, we will have to connect it into one of those four inputs with priority that we have. In case of the 1616, the inputs with priority, remember, that are five, six, seven, and eight. And then inputs nine to 16 are the remote inputs. So the meeting room and the director's office inputs will be done with, uh, will be connected with a WPA mix T locally installed in that meeting room and in that director's office connected directly to the remote port number nine and remote port number 10 of the hub 1616. Okay, I'm using a hub 1616 here. Output, we have three zones, easy. Output one or the open space office, the output two is the director's office, and the output three will be the meeting room. I apologize for the noises of, uh, of building works. Some neighbor is, is, has decided to, to rebuild their apartment today. We will have three different users. The director, which will have full access to all the zones, all the panels in the installation. The second user will be a general user. Everyone will be able to control uh, the, the volume or the sources in the open space area and the meeting room. And then a third user will be the guest. And when a guest comes to do a presentation in our meeting room, we will give them access to control their the volume of the meeting room uh, with their own with their own panel so we are we will need four different panels one will be for master volume that will be controlled by the director director will see will control the master volume of everything then another panel will control the open space area another one will will control the director's office volume source and, and don't control, and then another panels for, for meeting room. To organize this information between panels and users, for me, it's helpful to do uh, a, table, a table like this. Okay, table, a table like this, where I define the different users and the different, the different zones at the end, the different panels, and I am uh, marking with a cross which users can touch each panel so as you see the director will manage everything and the guest will only control the meeting room the guest user will only control the meeting room and the general user will control everything but the director's office okay and here is important to remark because you can say oh but with the master volume, I will operate the director's office. So an employer, an employee will be able, no. Master volume affects only to selected zones by the administrator. So we can exclude the director's office from the master, from the master volume. And now let's continue this in Hangar. Okay, so I am going to connect to Hangar, which is here. And with the default administration user that we have, which is admin admin, we'll sign the demo mode. You can use it. Okay. This is already, you can copy this link that Mario just sent into the chat. And it says demo mode, right? Hub series web application. You can log in and as a user admin and password admin. So let's do this user admin admin. Okay, so I'm doing that now with the, with, the, with the demo only. First, we said, let's control the, let's rename the inputs. Okay, so we have in input one, 
background music and input to the PC. So input one, we select it here, and then we change the label, PGM source. Input two, we have a PC. And then remember that the evacuation player, we have it in number five, because number five is the only that will be able, from five to eight, will have priorities there. So we cannot use three and four. We need to use at least number five. So let's go to number five and rename to evacuation player. Evac player. Nine and 10 will be meeting rooms and director's office. So remote here, well, nine is remote one actually. So this is meeting room and this is director's office. Perfect. Then we will do the same with the outputs, right? Outputs, perfect. In, we have open space office, director's office, and meeting room. Perfect. Rename open space. Director's office. And meeting room. Okay, perfect. And then we'll have to create the users. The first user will be the director who will have access to all these panels, all right? So users, user one in a, uh, here, user one will be director, enable. And here, be careful with this option. Look, this option says, allow loading predefined setups. The predefined setups are the, are the setups that we completely load or save for a, for a general configuration. What we are doing now is to set the second way of working, which is a wor way of working by, by uh, users, by setting different users with different permissions. The first way of working was setting one only, set up with all public panels so anyone can can play to, in every zone so because we don't want a user now to completely change the whole setup we just disable this option allow loading predefined setups no okay not even the director so password one two three four for example one two three four one, two, three, four. Okay, first user created. Second user is general, third user is guest. General, enable, not this, five, six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, eight. And then guest. Enable, disable, and zero, 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 zero. You can be a little bit more creative with the passwords that I am being, okay? I actually suggest that. We have the users created. Let's go with the panels now. Panels are here, pilot panels. All right. We have a general volume. The general volume panel, which is the master volume, will be only uh, operated by director and the general user, not by the guest. Okay, so general volume. It is a public panel. Okay, it says now that it's enabled, that it's public. So I'm going to edit. Enabled, yes, public, no. First thing is that we do public, no. Label, general volume, fine. The users, what did we say? Only director and general, only director and general. Not the guest, not all users. Okay. 
Okay. And we will see the general volume here. Perfect. We can set some some colors here. For now, we're going we're not going to touch it. We have a pre-visualization here option of the panels of this general volume panel. Let's see it. Okay, it will look like this. Okay, a slide to turn up and down the general volume. Perfect. The second panel is open space. Open space was in output what? In output one. Remember, open space is output one. Perfect. So zone one, this is this we have pre preloaded 16 different panels, one per zone. Okay. So we can take advantage of this and say, okay, this will be for zone one, which is which is uh, the open space, and the open space will be uh, the same operated by the director and the general user. So edit enabled. Yes, it is not a public panel. Instead of calling it zone one, we can call it open space. And general volume no users is director and general, not the guest. The zone that we are targeting is open space, correct? And then the volume control will be done through a slider. We could choose a knob or an up and down. Let's set, let's let's try now up and down buttons. The source selection will be between in the general space we're talking now, between no source, between background music and the PC. We don't need to play in the open space any source from the meeting room or director's office, or even to modify anything from the evacuation player, right? So only with one and two, uh, to manage one and two is enough for this youth, for this panel. And then, uh, with the third, the third, the third panel is equalizer. We will we will be able to choose between base, mid, and treble through sliders. Okay, let's leave the default colors now. So in the open space, we will see these panels. These three panels will be seen. Uh, the one on the left side will be one panel volume control. You see its buttons instead of a sliders that we had before. Then the source selection between background music, PC, or no source, and then do whatever that we like with the with the tone control okay okay let's go for the third panel director's office director's office was in zone number two so let's take advantage of this panel it's not public it's Directors, general volume no, the output two, correct. The users, only the director, not the general user. And remember the director wanted, uh, yeah, her favorite color was fuchsia, right? Okay. So she will be able to control volume, she will be able to control source selection, tone control, but instead of leaving the default colors, Yes, we can satisfy her. So in the control, we'll set this fuchsia. We will leave the text in black and the background in white, otherwise it will be too much. But, but we will set the controls in fuchsia for her. So let's see, perfect. She will see the panels like this and she will, uh, she will love, love it to have it like this. And we have a last user, which is the meeting room user, zone three. It's not public, it's the meeting room. Boom. Yes, and users, it will be only for the guest, okay? And the rest of controls will be the default ones. We're done with the panel creation, okay? Now, Remember that we have the evacuation player in input number five. Okay, so we should go to the pagers, Duckers, and input. Look, we have here Ducker in, Ducker in, five, six, seven, eight. We have to enable first because we have it in number in input number five. We have to enable first and then set 
priority to first, because we only have one level of priority. It will be a Docker affecting to all zones. Okay, here we are only using three zones, so we could actually disable these ones. And we will set a threshold, so when, when it will start overwriting everything else, the depth, the attack, hold and release, so all, all parameters for this uh, noise gate priority module can be set here. And the priority volume, we are also setting it here. With this, only enabling this and being sure that it's, it's affecting all the zones that we want, so these are not needed. These are, are actually not connected. With this would be enough to have the priority established and ready for, for input five and affecting all the zones. And this is everything. Okay. I'm sure there will be questions. If there are questions, we will answer in the end. So let's go back to the presentation now. The configuration is done. So once the configuration is done, we have yes, a master volume that, as we saw, no, we, the master volume is affecting only the open space. Not that the, I don't know if we did this. Did we do this? We, the master volume is affecting who? The general volume. Aha, uh -huh. so it's a general volume. Well, no, sorry, 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 it's not here. Here, the master volume will be seen. If we, uh, we have to, we have to see it from the public profile. And from this public profile, we have to also not allow or disable the loading of the setups. Be careful, this tool is very important. Okay. So, back to the presentation. We will have the panels done with a little customization that we, that we set for the director. And we're done with the presentation, remember this, this last sentence, even, even if you don't use all inputs and outputs, it's still worth using a hub. Hmm? So now you should be ready. <clears throat> To become an Eclair pilot, this team will be waiting for you. 